Hey, Nikki and boyfriend. Um, I wanted to just shoot this little video for you real quick to show you how we remediated this area. Um, you can see I've got what's called a negative airspace set up. So we've dropped plastic from ceiling to floor and completely taped it off so that they're like, we can get it closed up as much as possible. Um, they make these cool little zippers, by the way, that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's or Amazon. And you just attach them to the plastic and cut a, cut a slit down it so you can get in and out of the containment area. Um, this started because I thought I had an old water leak up here and we wanted to cut into the ceiling and I knew we had to contain the area in case there was mold because the minute that you disturb mold, it will spread mycotoxins. It is mold's defense to help keep it alive is to send these toxins out. And that's actually what makes us so sick. It's not the mold itself. And um, so we got up into the ceiling and there was actually, there's no water damage up there. You can see it pretty clearly. Uh, whatever had been leaking must have been fixed. Um, we are keeping it open for probably about a week or so just to make sure there are no leaks up there. Um, but what I did find was some peeling paint. And so of course I peeled it off the wall because I, I'm like that. And we found mold behind um, layers of paint. Luckily it was not gro growing on this plaster, but um, it was growing on the back of the paint. Um, and you should be aware of that when you paint, make sure your surfaces are really dry. Make sure you're painting the proper paint onto your surface because like this, that plaster, this is plaster from the twenties. Um, it, it won't like a water-based paint won't adhere to this. So it's not going to stick really well. But anyway, just to let you know how we contain this area real quick, in case you decide to do this, um, we, we created the negative airspace and then we run an air scrubber in here. I actually own this one, but you can rent them. Um, they're kind of expensive to rent and I knew I had a bunch of areas of remediation that needed to be done. And so I um, went ahead and bought one and they, they will actually filter out myco mycotoxins. Uh, most air purifiers don't, um, but this one does. Uh, the reason why you don't want to run it all the time is they're kind of loud. Um, but what we do is we set that up and then you see this tube, it's going to this window right here. It's, it, by the way, it's, we're, we're done. So it's cut, we detached it from the window, but, um, we, that way it can filter any harmful air out the window and not recirculate it back into the room. Um, you also in a situation like this one, you'd want to like have something pulling in fresh air. So I would run another tube to, you know, the other window um, and bring that fresh air into the space and then have, you know, the bad air flowing out the window. Uh, we also use PPE as sitting here laying on the floor and that includes Tyvek suits, the full ones with the hoods and the little feet in them. Um, we use respirators with mold filters on them, goggles and gloves. You really want to like, uh, protect your whole body from this. Um, not that it's going to immediately make you totally sick if you um, were to get exposed, but for somebody like me who's had mold toxicity, I do, I'm really sensitive to it. I can walk into somebody's house and, and I can tell they have mold within like a couple of minutes because my nose starts burning or I start getting itchy. Um, that was one of the things I noticed, like when I go into really moldy areas, like I, I start getting really itchy on my arms. Um, anyway, I hope this helps a little bit. And if you have any other questions about mold, just give me a call. I'll leave you my number and I'll be happy to talk to you about it because um, I've been dealing with it for like three, three or four years and I'll, I know a lot about it. So anyway, y'all have great days.